Welcome to Magnificat.tv news program dedicated to providing news from the church. Today is Wednesday, May 29th, 2024, and this are our headlines. In an interview granted to an American television station, the Pope has rejected both the blessing of homosexual unions and the female diaconate. The Pope has approved the canonization of Blessed Carlo Cutis after the existence of a miracle attributed to his intercession was accepted. Cardinal Koch has denounced the rise of Neo-Arianism, which denies the divinity of Christ, especially in Germany. This year, the pilgrimage to the French Cathedral of Chartres was more numerous than ever, and many young people took part in it. The Cardinal of Quebec, Lacroix, has been cleared of accusations of permissiveness in the face of sexual abuse by priests. There will be no deaconesses, or at least there will be no woman receiving the diaconate as the first degree of the priesthood. This has been categorically affirmed by the Pope. Pope Francis has granted a new interview to the media. This time, it was the turn of the American network, CBS. In the interview, journalist Nora O'Donnell asked the Pope the following questions. Last year, he decided to allow Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples. That's a big change. Why? To that question, the answer the Pope offers is, No, what I allowed was not to bless the union. That can't be done because that's not the sacrament. I cannot. The Lord made it so, the Pope continues. But blessing each person, yes, the blessing is for everyone. For everyone, to bless a homosexual type union, however, is against the right given, against the law of the church. But to bless every person, why not? The blessing is for everyone. Some people were shocked by this. But why? Everyone, everyone. Later, the interviewer says to the Pope, I am curious, will our little daughter, Raised Catholic today, ever have the opportunity to be a deaconess and participate as a member of the clergy in the church? The answer could not have been more blunt. No. At the insistence of the presenter, Francis insists that in no case will there be deaconesses who receive the sacrament of holy orders. No. If it is a question of deacons with holy orders, no. The Vatican has recognized the existence of a miracle due to the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acutis. As a consequence, he will be proclaimed a saint. The Pope today approved the promulgation of the decree presented to him by Cardinal Semeraro, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Causes of Saints. Among them, that of a miracle attributed to the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acuti the next convocation of a consistory for his canonization has been announced. During an audience with Cardinal Semeraro, Pope Francis authorized the promulgation of decrees concerning, among others, the miracle attributed to Blessed Giuseppe Ayamano, founder of the Consolata Missionary Institute, and the miracle attributed to Blessed Carlo Acutis, a layman. Carlo Acutis, born in London and raised in Milan, showed from an early age a deep Catholic faith, especially to the Eucharist. Carlo was known for his computer skills, creating a website on Eucharistic miracles that has become an indispensable reference on the subject. He died at the age of 15 of leukemia, offering his suffering for the Pope and the Church. His body rests in Assisi and he was beatified on October 10, 2020. From an early age, Charles developed a great devotion to the Eucharist, 
referring to it as his highway to heaven. He made his first holy communion at the age of seven, and from then he did not miss daily mass. In addition to spending time in Eucharistic adoration and praying the rosary every day. The prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Christian Unity, Cardinal Koch, has warned of the rise of Neo Arianism, especially in Germany. Cardinal Koch, prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Christian Unity, gave an interview to the newspaper Tax Post to take stock of the situation since he received in 2010 the assignment to ensure the advancement of ecumenism. The cardinal recalls the absolute rejection of the Orthodox to the blessing of homosexual couples, compares the Agnican schism over the ordination of women with the situation in the church, and assures that today a new Arianism is advancing in the German-speaking countries. Regarding the disapproval of the declaration, fiducial supplicants, on the blessing of homosexual couples by the Eastern Christian communities. Koch expects enlightening words from the prefect of the Dicastery of the Doctrine of the Faith. Just as the Anglican Communion has been divided, among other things, over the ordination of women, the Cardinal also sees disunity in the Catholic Church on this issue. In Germany, Switzerland and other countries, there are quite a few bishops who firmly demand the ordination of women and consider that the future of the church depends on it. For him, it is important that all Christian churches and ecclesiastical communities, especially in the Holy Year 2025, profess in ecumenical communion faith in Jesus Christ through man and through God. Unity can only be found in the faith. And that is why we must recover unity not only among today's churches, but also with the church of the past, and above all, with his apostolic origin. This is crucial, Koch says, because of the Aryan heresy, which was whispered in its day and holds that Jesus is not the Son of God, but only an intermediate between God and man, does not simply belong to the past, but is also widely spread today. He's thinking especially of the German-speaking countries, where this challenge is still present. It should not be a coincidence, the Cardinal adds that Pope Benedict XVI has repeatedly emphasized this. In the present situation, behind the expression, Jesus said, Church no, lies, the even more profound affirmation, Jesus, yes, Son of God, no. The Holy Year is an important occasion to reaffirm the Christological faith in the economical communion. Cardinal Mueller presided at the closing of the annual pilgrimage to Chartres, which each year has a greater number of faithful, especially young people. On Pentecost Monday, German Cardinal Gerard Mueller celebrated the closing pontifical mass of the traditional pilgrimage to Chartres according to the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite. The three days working pilgrimage from Paris this year attracted more than 18,000 participants and record number since its foundation in 1983. Among the young people who arrived at Chartres Cathedral on Monday were 1,500 foreign pilgrims, mainly from Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, but also from the United States and many other countries. In his sermon, the Cardinal began by recalling the most important of Christological dogma, to see God, we must follow Christ to our destination in the eternal abode. Jesus is not just any prophet, but rather the word of God made flesh. He alone could say to this disciple, whoever sees me, sees the Father. The cardinal recalled the persecutions that Christians have always suffered from the beginning of Christianity in Roman Gallia in France, many Christians in Lyon and Vienne suffered in their flesh at the hands of the excited popular masses and the state authorities. The whole arsenal of hostility towards the Catholic faith, from public mastery to the cruelest execution, the mere fact 
of confessing the name of Jesus Christ made them guilty of death. And even today, Christians are the most persecuted religious community, he added. He recalled Christ's word to the elect. Who must reject the evil and temptation of the world. Do not be afraid. I have overcome the world. The crucified and risen Lord says to his disciples every day. Self-destruction through suicide and euthanasia, drugs and alcohol, or the rejection of our masculine or feminine sexuality are not options for us Christians. The Prefect Emeritus of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith exhorted to defend the dignity of man. We commit ourselves fearlessly for the right to life of every human being, from conception to natural death, for his inviolable dignity, for the civil, ethical, and religious freedom of every person. Cardinal Lacroix, Archbishop of Quebec, has been cleared of allegations of permissiveness in the face of sexual abuse by priests. The LEC has reported that the canonical investigation regarding the accusation of sexual abuse filed in Canada against Cardinal Lacrius, pronounced Lacria, has found no evidence of misconduct or abuse on the part of the Cardinal. The Pope authorizes the investigating judge in the case to answer questions. The OLC statement says on February 8, 2024, the Holy Father entrusted André Denis, a retired judge of the Superior Court of Quebec, with the mandate to clarify an accusation made in the context of a class action lawsuit against the Idiocese of Quebec. The report of the preliminary canonical investigation carried out by the judge was concluded on May 6, 2024, and delivered to the Holy Father in the following days. In light of the fact examined by the judge, the report does not permit the identification of any action constituting misconduct or abuse on the part of Cardinal Gerard C. Lacrius, pronounced Lacria. Consequently, no further canonical proceedings are anticipated. The Cardinal was named in a class action lawsuit alleging sexual abuse. The allegations were made public in late January 2024 and date back to 1987 and 1988 when the alleged victim was 17 years old. In response to the allegations, Cardinal Lacrius categorically denied any wrongdoing, describing the allegations as unfounded. Despite his denial, he decided to temporarily withdraw from his duties as Archbishop while the situation was clarified. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting on the Pope's words rejecting the blessing of homosexual unions and the female diaconate. This week, the Pope has granted an interview to a media, one more. In this case, it has been an American television network, CBS. The journalist, who asked interesting questions and who touched on the most controversial points, or at least the most popular, of the interventions and statements of Pope Francis in one of the questions questioned him about the blessing of homosexual couples, echoing what she undoubtedly believes, because it is what most people think. This journalist asked the Pope the following question. Last year, she says, you decided to allow Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples. That's a big change. Why? That is, the journalist is taken for granted. I repeat, as she and the majority believed it was accepted that the Pope allowed the blessing of homosexual couples, she takes it for granted and only limits herself to ask why he allowed that which she qualifies as a great change. Surely, she did not expect the answer given by the Pope, who answered him by saying, No, what I allowed was not to bless the union, that cannot be done, because that union is not the sacrament. I cannot. The Lord made it so, but blessing each person, yes, the blessing is for everyone. Blessing a union of homosexual type, however, goes against the right granted, against the law of the church. I do not know how the journalist felt after listening to this intervention, this answer of the Pope. 
Personally, when I read it, when I saw the answer of the Holy Father, I felt very pleased, because that is exactly what I said when Fiducia Supplicans appeared. We must not forget that in number 31st of this document, it is said that it is possible to bless homosexual or heterosexual couples who are living together in an irregular way. That made a big fuss, to the point that the African church has, was confronted, others too, and not only the Africans, all ecumenical relations with the Orthodox and Copts were cut off, and a few of us who dare to say, bless the person, yes, Bless the couple is confusing and ambiguous, because how can you bless the couple without blessing what makes a couple a couple? Blessing the person, yes, but blessing the couple implies blessing what they do. What makes those two people a couple? That is the union they have between them. Only the Virgin Mary, as an intercessor, has prevented me from having my throat caught so far. And I say so far because you never know. That is what I'm very pleased. I'm very happy that the Pope is saying exactly what a few of us and me and another another one, of course, by no means the most important, what a few of us, including me, said. Now, I think there is also pertinent questions. Why does it have to be said that the couple is blessed if the union that makes those two people a couple is not blessed? Because blessing people regardless of their situation has always been done in the church. The journalist, as a good journalist should do, continued to get, dig into the wounds, and in this case raised the issue of the female diaconate, which is, along with the blessing of ho homosexual couples, one of the most topical and most controversial, and she did it based on her own experience. She said, I have a daughter, who has been educated as Catholic. Is there any possibility that my daughter will at some point participate in the sacred order? The Pope's answer was categorical, very clear, because it was a single word. No. No, nothing more. He did not say anything else. Is there a possibility that my daughter will be, or will anyone day, participate in holy or orders? No. The journalist perhaps wanted to dampen a little into the Pope's sharp and very concrete and clear answer. And then she said, well, but is it an open issue? That perhaps in the future? To which the Pope answered, no. If it is a question of deacons with sacred orders, no. After these two answers of the Pope, those who present themselves better said, as his friends, are on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and also, with a very deep disappointment, the Pope has been very clear, one cannot bless the union of two homosexual or heterosexual persons who are not married by the Church, and there will be no female diaconate, as long as, as the Pope says, it means receiving the first degree of the priesthood. Another type of diaconate could be approved, diaconate as a service, not the clerical diaconate in what we normally understand as diaconate. Another type of diaconate could be tried where women or men remain lay and exercise certain functions, but this is already being done at the moment by the acolytes, male and female, and there is a risk, therefore, of giving a name that confuses a reality that is to a large extent already being exercised. The diaconate, and therefore, there is a risk of creating new division in the church, and a deep uneasiness in many of the faithful, and a deep crisis of conscience in others for something that is already being done. It is simply giving it a name that is confusing. Because if you say that you are going to give the diaconate to woman, no matter how much you clarify it is not a diaconate that introduces into the priesthood, the first degree of the priesthood, but that it is a lay, no matter how much you say it, the confusion is going to be there. I think that in the view of what happened with Fiducia Supplicans, it would be necessary to rethink very well if this step has to be taken. There is another question. There already are several places and parishes where blessings have been given to people, to homosexual couples, against what Fiducia Supplicans ex itself explicitly says. Because it forbids any kind of ceremony that could be confused with a marriage, that is not to be done within the church. It says that the priest does not have to be in his vestments. There are photos and videos of priests in their vestments for a wedding, with their alb, with their stole, and even in front of the altar, 
blessing that homosexual couple. The same is happening with female diaconates. There are also many places, especially in Germany, but not only there, where women with their alb and stole are next to the priest. They read the word of God. They give the homily. In some cases, they even impose hands when the moment of the consecration arrives. Why is this tolerated? The doctrine is clear, and I believe that the Pope has settled it once and for all. One thing and the other, there will be no female diaconate if this implies access to the first degree of the priesthood. The doctrine is clear. But why are all these things allowed? Perhaps it is a question of prudence, of prudence of the responsible person who does not want to take sides against, to put punishments against priests or parishes or dioceses for not breaching. It is possible that this is a question of prudence, but it must be taken into account that when a thing becomes a custom, it is very difficult to go back, and of course it is impossible to avoid the scandal. This week, a cardinal also intervened, a cardinal of the Vatican, Cardinal Koch, who is the president of the Dicastery for Christian Unity. Koch is someone who was appointed by Pope Benedict XVI and who has been occupying this same position for the whole time of Francis's pontificate, ecumenism. He's an interesting character who is not afraid. He was, I was there, the only cardinal who attended the Mass for the first anniversary of the death of Pope Benedict XVI at the Vatican. He is a cardinal who always speaks very clearly and very prudently, as he should be. And in this case, he has also done, he has also granted an interview. And he has said, he has recalled that fiducia supplicans meant the end of ecumenical relations with the Orthodox and with the Copts to begin with but also recalled the female priesthood and the blessing of homosexual couples in the Anglicans themselves, which is certainly the most liberal, or one of the most liberal so-called historical churches, has generated a schism. He has recalled this because he says, We must not follow a path that has caused a rupture. We cannot imitate something that has harmed these ecclesiastical communities. Koch also said something else, very interesting. He spoke about, he is Swiss, but as Switzerland is now, there is no much difference between Switzerland and Germany. And he spoke about the situation of the German Synod, and he described all those who are promoting the German Synod, even in open confrontation with Rome. He described them as Neo-Aryans. Maybe, for most people, this Arianism is something they don't know what it means, and it doesn't tell them anything. Arianism was a heresy of the first centuries that denied the divinity of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a superman, an extraordinary man, or in whatever you want, but he was not God. Cardinal Koch has said that they are Neo-Arians, and he's probably absolutely right, because the bottom line is whether or not we accept the divinity of Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus Christ is God, as the Pope has said, we cannot change his message. We cannot. Christ has said one thing and we cannot say Christ did not know what he was saying. Christ was conditioned by his time. We have to correct Christ because we know more about man and theology and everything than Christ himself. That implies denying the divinity of Jesus Christ. With great courage, Cardinal Koch has said they are Neo-Aryans. They are the Aryans coming back again. Another cardinal, Cardinal Fernandez, the prefect of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, has made a trip this week to Egypt to meet with the Patriarch of the Copts to try to mend that rift with Christian community that the Church was increasingly united with, even accepting canonizing Copts who were killed by Muslims. He has tried to explain that fiducia supplicans does not approve, does not bless homosexual unions, which is exactly what the Pope has said. I repeat, if blessings of people have always been done, then we must try not to publish things that create confusions, because then the consequences, as Cardinal Koch says, are terrible for ecumenism and encourage division in the Church. I would like to end with some extraordinary news, wonderful news, a miracle has been approved through the intercession of Blessed Carlo Acutis, for all of us who love this young man, this teenager who died recently, just a few years ago. For all of us who have devoted to him, this is an extraordinary news. 
Therefore, by approving this miracle, the Pope has recognized the miracle and has declared that he will be canonized. Until now, he was blessed, but now he will be a saint. The date on which the canonization will take place is not yet known. Possibly, it will be in the Vatican or in Assisi, where his body is. But, in any case, the important thing, apart from the date, is that this extraordinary fact, a new miracle through the intercession of Blessed Carlo Cudis, that makes him a saint. Those of us who love, admire, and rely on the intercession of Blessed Carlo Cudis are truly blessed. Until next week, God willing. We will keep you informed of what is happening in the church. In the meantime, you can check our website at www.magnificat.tv. Until next week, God willing.